starting off with deadlifts. The reason I love deadlifting, or why it's a really good exercise in my opinion, is because it bleeds into a lot of other exercises, such as squatting, RDLs, and overhead pressing. The deadlift is, however, a controversial exercise because a lot of people believe that it's dangerous. However, I've been performing it for quite a while now, and as long as your form is correct and you're not ego lifting, just like any other freeway exercise, it is a safe exercise. When I deadlift, I very rarely use belts, if ever, and that's because I follow the general rule of wearing a belt if you're approaching a weight that's around 85 to 90% of your one rep max. And this range obviously does depend for certain individuals. So for you, it might be higher or lower, depending on how comfortable you feel. And that is another factor. If you feel as if your spine is about to snap on the last rep or your back is extremely fatigued and on the previous rep, your form was 50-50, the smartest thing to do is to not do that final rep and then do it in your next set. The other reason people believe the deadlift isn't a good exercise is because there are other movements which may compete with the deadlift such as barbell rows, RDLs, trap bar deadlifts or sumo deadlifts and there are many more. The reason you might do one of these exercises over the other is because you might not be able to perform one of these exercises due to an injury meaning an alternate exercise is better suited for you. Doing my top set, I've been stuck at three plates on my deadlift for six reps for a month or two now and I do want to get to 10 reps which I think is very possible within a short time frame because that is only four reps to add on to six reps. The reason for this is because first of all, my technique is probably not 100% perfect. Not that it ever will be, but there is room for improvement as well as for my form. And this means that you do over time get more efficient at lifts, meaning the energy you put into a lift or the way you move does become better. And this is in terms of the way you engage your muscles and the muscles that you do use to pull. So for example, instead of engaging my arms or my biceps when doing a deadlift. I'll put more of that attention and focus into engaging my lower back, my hamstrings and my glutes. And also just executing deadlifts over and over again will help me do this and become better at doing deadlifts. And this goes for any specific type of movement. And I usually like to compare lat pull downs and pull ups because a lot of people think if I get strong at pull downs, then I'll be able to do a lot of pull ups. And you could say this is partially correct because you are strengthening the muscles involved in pulling and pulling weight. However, you're not engaging the muscles in the exact same way that you would for pull-ups and also trying to perfect your form because the person who's been doing pull-ups for a year versus the person who's been doing strictly pull-downs for a year, assuming that they pull the same weight, the person who's been doing pull-ups consistently will obviously be able to do more pull-ups. And that's why I believe if you want to get good at an exercise, just go and do that specific exercise. Don't beat around the bush because you're essentially wasting your time. You may want to start off with bent over barbell rows because Maintaining a straight posture and preventing your back from rounding out after doing some intense deadlifting can be quite difficult. And this is what actually stopped me from increasing the weight here because if I did, my form would become worse. And this does mean that I am limiting gains for my lats and my upper back. But it does come down to whatever you prioritize. And I do want to prioritize getting stronger at the deadlift. But when I have started that with bent over barbell rows before, I do definitely feel that I can load up the exercise a lot more, and I have, and I definitely do feel a much greater lap pump in general. The two types of barbell rows I like doing are the wide overhand grip, and this allows for me to flare out my elbows, increasing engagement in the upper back, and the underhand shoulder width grip allows for me to tuck in my elbows, increasing lat engagement. My favorite variation of the pull-up to maximize engagement in the lats is doing the wide overhand grip, and the reason for this is because whenever you do a wide overhand grip, this naturally arches your scapula, which further engages the lats. But regardless of the type of pull-up you're doing, it will heavily engage the lats. That's why I would easily place pull-ups in the top three back exercises, because they're a simple exercise to do that don't need any type of machinery. All you need is a bar. And you might be thinking, what happens when my body weight becomes too light or I become strong enough and I need to begin overloading or progressively overloading the pull-ups? Instead of doing a regular chin up where you bring your chin to the bar, to make it more difficult, try bringing your chin above the bar. And then once you can do those easily, try getting your chest to touch the bar. And it is extremely difficult to do 10 clean pull-ups where you get your chest to touch the bar. Finishing off with curls. My biceps were already very fatigued by the time I got to doing the bicep isolation work because I was doing bent over barbell rows, which I do feel a lot in my biceps. 
And on top of that, I did bodyweight pull-ups. Well, my back is already very fatigued, meaning my biceps have to do even more work to overcompensate for my back being tired. So if you do feel as if you want to get stronger or push your biceps a lot closer to failure, then beginning off with bicep isolation work may help you with this. And if your main goal is to grow bigger arms, then including the exercises that grow your arms when you are more fresh and have more energy at the beginning of your workout would make more sense. I hope this video helped. Make sure you like and subscribe and chat to you later.